Today I have a OnePlus 7 Pro, and this one has certainly seen better days, and has an OLED that won't display, along with a shattered back panel. For the time being, the customers opted to replace only the display, so I need to remove the back panel without damaging it further. I'm going to do a display only replacement without replacing the frame. This ought to be fun. Let's head over to the heating mat. 90 degrees centigrade is more than enough to soften the water resistant adhesive. Despite not having an official IP rating, this phone is indeed water and dust resistant, but with a shattered display or back glass, that resistance is gone. Then I can use a slim pry tool to cut my way around the back panel. There's a single ribbon that runs under the panel, to the left of the OnePlus logo on the back, so I need to be careful when cutting there. With the panel removed, I can unlatch the clip over the camera flash Lego connector that also needs to be disconnected. Back glass can now be set aside. There are 14 identical Phillips screws to remove. One is covered by a white tamper evident sticker. Over here is undeniably the coolest feature on this device. It's a stepper motor that raises the selfie camera out of the housing. It allows for an edge-to-edge -edge uninterrupted display. I wish more devices had this, especially since I have yet to see a motor fail. Now for the most important part, disconnecting the battery. Since I'm only replacing the display, nothing else up here needs to be unlatched or removed. Down to the bottom, we'll find eight more of those screws and one more tamper evidence sticker. There's a ribbon on your right that needs to be disconnected. Now the phone will go back on the heating mat and warm up the display I'll be cutting off. Using the same metal pry tool I used to cut the back panel off, I'll cut around the edges. The ribbon goes to the charging board along the front left of the phone. If you're trying to save the OLED panel, be careful cutting around there. This one is completely dead, so I won't be as gentle as I normally would. After prying the display panel off the front, we get a quick peek at one of the largest optical fingerprint readers I've seen on a device. We can also get a good look at the transparent sections of the OLED panel that allow light to pass through for the fingerprint reader, as well as the proximity sensor at the top. When the display is on, these holes are completely invisible. Cleaning the frame is very important. Even the smallest remaining chip or shard of glass will cause irreparable damage to the new panel. The black double-sided adhesive around the edges is similar to Motorola's, where it doesn't fully peel off and instead breaks apart, or turns to gunk when a solvent is added. The next step is also pretty important, testing the new display. I'll flip it over and connect the short display ribbon to the board, then power it on to test. Is this technically a folding phone now? With everything looking good, I'll disconnect the screen and battery and flip it back over. The protective papers will get pulled off the adhesive I laid down a bit ago. I'll add some B7000 silicone adhesive in very small strips and a seemingly random pattern on the frame. This will ensure the display does not lift should the double-sided adhesive fail for some reason. Now the display panel can be pressed firmly to the frame, take extra care to line it up properly because there is no undo button after this step. Now it's time for some speedy reassembly. Both mid panels are screwed down with their 22 Phillips screws. Unfortunately, I do have to reuse this broken back glass as I stated at the beginning of this video, but with a nice protective case, this phone should look brand new. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this or it helped you out, please let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more repairs coming your way, and I'll see you next time.